Noah Gibbs. I am the author of Mastering Software Technique, where I say that what people should do to get better at computer programming and developing software is to do a sort of an exercise called a coding study. Now, I describe how to in a fair bit of detail, and I give some examples, but you know what's better than that? Watching me actually do one, I think, is more helpful than that. So, today, I thought, it's a little toy I messed around with to, to first learn JavaScript, kind of like a coding study. Uh, I called it facelets, and the idea is that you um, you have little faces that uh, that are animated and that have facial features that you know raise their eyebrows when they're surprised and things like that. And you can mix multiple different facial expressions together. And I thought, huh, I could do that in ASCII art. I could do that in a really small way. When I was first learning JavaScript, I was going more slowly and more to the point, I wasn't practicing as effectively. And so I originally did that in a way that was kind of slow, and I didn't learn about it very fast. There are a lot of things where, you know, a lot of times I've looked back on it and thought, huh, I could have done that better. So today, I'm going to take one hour of time, and I'm going to turn it into learning about that project, about the facelets, and about, uh, just in general, um, Ruby command line animations, which is another thing I'm doing more of lately, uh, and I haven't necessarily historically done all that much of. And so I'm learning about those two things. So those of you who've read about coding studies from me before know that what you do is you pick a tool, a task, and a purpose, and an amount of time. So my tool is going to be plain Ruby and command line for ASCII art sort of things. Uh, my task is to make this program. First, I'm going to have it display a face, and then maybe I add some emotion to it, and then maybe I add some animation to it. I haven't exactly decided what all the steps are, but I think that's the first three things I find interesting about it. There are an un unbelievable number of things you can do. The question is, what do you find interesting about it? Uh, and obviously, I'll you know I'll play with things as I go along. I'll, I'll see what I think as I go along. <clears throat> so I have my iPhone here, and I'm going to set up a one-hour timer. Hard part, hardest part of that is always picking a ringtone to uh, to surprise me when I'm done. But <clears throat> I've told you what I'm going to do. I've started with a new empty directory and a Ruby file which contains only a single line, which is a comment of the name of the file called study.rb. And so I'm going to sit and develop this. Through the magic of video editing, I won't make you sit through the entire thing minute for minute. But instead, I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, I will give you some idea of how long it takes, and you can see how I do a coding study. So here I am. Hitting start on my one hour timer. All right. <clears throat> so in study.rb, uh, with a coding study on a time limit, this is going to go a little bit slower because I'm talking to you the entire time. One of the first things you need to do is figure out what's the easiest way I can get to something where I'm doing something interesting. So for facial expressions, I'm going to have to move around the eyes. I'm going to have to move around, you know, whatever features I have. So let's begin with two eyes and a mouth. That's kind of the minimum recognizable thing you need for a face. Um, and so for now... going to start with, let's say, a 10 by 10 grid, and it'll be possible for me to play around with that later. But I want enough room that a uh, probably kind of goofy looking face, because, you know, remember, whatever these features are, like, they're, there's, they're, they're going to be a small number of spots, and they have to move around a lot. Um, so if, if it's going to look goofy either way, I should make that a feature. I should use it. four down is where the other eye is, so I'm going to, you know, intentionally make them a little bit offset. Again, they're, they're going to look goofy, so I should play with that. And in fact, I can make it goofier yet, uh, and the higher eye can be a little smaller. So, yeah. 
If it's going to look goofy, I should have fun with it. I should, I should use the fact that it looks goofy. Now, the mouth is interesting because I probably don't want just a one-character mouth. But, you know, in just getting something working, a one-character mouth is not the end of the world. So we'll start there. Uh, we want it to be in between the two eyes, more or less directly between. So 2, 7 is 9. So let's say 4. Again, it's going to be a little goofy. It's going to be a little offset. But I want to see what this does. Um, and it's going to be fairly far down. So let's say 8 down. All right. And if those are the features, um, we're going to want to draw them. solid start. Um, I assume I'm doing great on time. Yeah, it hasn't even been five minutes yet, and I'm talking through it. So again, this is going to go a little bit slower uh, because I'm, pay I'm paying attention and talking it out for you. Great. So, grid feature. Uh, the draw face, let's say, I'm going to call it show face instead of draw it, but one way or another it's going to return this grid. It's going to return, in fact, uh, it should probably return the grid joined with new lines, because and then we'll draw it. So then, put show face features, and that should draw it out. So let's see if that seems like it's working. Uh, let me just make this a thing I can run. And uh, and run it. Oh. Well that's showing me visible backslash ends. Oh, because that's a slash, not a backslash. Hey, well, there we go. Uh, there we are. Sorry, using a slightly unfamiliar keyboard. <laughs> Several parts of this setup are unfamiliar. Great. So that's, uh, that's sort of a goofy little face. The mouth is smaller than I'd like, and I kind of like a nose. Um, the nose is an easy thing to add. Let's see if it gets more convincing when I add a nose. So I will start from the mouth. I will uh, put the nose in line with the mouth, but higher up. Let's try here, and then the nose can be a letter A. A is kind of nose shape, so let's give it a go. Yeah, it's a little bit high. Uh, let's lower it by one and run it again. Yeah, I think the eyes being slightly offset from each other and one smaller than the other is too much goofy. And so let's take the lowercase o1 and let's move it down by one. Going to give it a little room. Hey, I like that a lot better. That looks like a face. Uh, and then the other thing I'm going to do because I want to give it an expression is eyebrows. We've got the two eyes. So let's get two eyebrows. The eyebrows are going to be a little higher than the eyes, but in the same x and y position. And I think think they can be underscores. That'll put them fairly low. Let's see if that looks angry with the low eyebrows. No, not angry at all. In fact, that's so high it looks surprised, which means that I've probably raised them too much for now. It'd be great to raise them when they're surprised. Yeah, like that's that's about where I want eyebrows. Uh, and now the nose sort of looks off-center. One thing I could do is to move the small eye to the left and its eyebrow. So if I do that, let's put it at an x of 1, uh, and see what I think. 
That's a different kind of goofy. That's not terrible. That's not terrible. I like that. Okay. <clears throat> so, now that I have the beginning of that, I mean, I feel like everything is a little low down, but that's, that's not the end of the world. That's not a big deal. Um, and again, I should be trying to do this as fast as reasonable. I should be trying not to waste time on a one-hour study. Okay. <clears throat> so that looks pretty okay. Now, one of the things I want to be able to do is to make facial expressions, is to make it feel angry or happy or sad or whatever. When I originally did this in JavaScript on a canvas, I could make small modifications to that. I could make it a little angry or a little happy or a little sad, which may not be possible here. Um, but let's see what we can do. because uh, I want a large font size here. I want you folks to be able to see what's going on just character by character, even someplace like YouTube where there's a little bit of blurring. Uh, and so I apologize for you not being able to see more of the code at once. Um, anyway, show a facial emotion. We got the features, we got an emotion. So we'd like to duplicate the features. We don't want to change the original ones. Uh, and this is just a bunch of hash tables where all of these things are primitives. We don't want to, ch well, we, yeah, we don't want to mess with the, yeah, so that'll be pretty easy. Off, let's make sure this parses. Let's make sure it can run. Hey, look, it runs. It's got the modifications we made. It looks all right. Um, and then instead of show face features, comment that out, and we'll put, do we call it show face emotion? Yeah, show face emotion features. Surprised. Fabulous. Let's see if it works. No implicit convention of a symbol to integer. That's study.rb, study.rb line 87, emo, emotions.select, e, e name equals the one we gave. So for emotions, name is surprised, uh, e name equals, so it should be a symbol, and it is a symbol. Uh, so it doesn't like emo features dot each. Emo features, ah, okay. Dot each, name delta f. 
no implicit conversion of symbol into integer, which normally happens when you try to dereference something. All right, so it thinks it's finding a thing. I'm going to print out emo and see what it looks like in the Rails app or something. I do a stadere.puts emo, but here it's just a... Oh, hey, it's an empty array. Uh, so there's my first problem. I want detect, not select. Detect finds the first one. Select finds every one where it's true. But there are none for whom it's true. So, for each emotion, we're checking if the name is the symbol surprised. This hash, that hash name, surprised. That's a little odd. But it's saying, now can't find emotion surprised, so that's a step up. Let's see how I'm finding it again. Emotions, emo equals emotions dot detect, e, e dot name, or e, the reference name equals, Oh, I am shadowing the variable because I'm being all cutesy with my variable names. I can't call them both E, and now I don't call them both E, and hey look, it successfully finds the surprised emotion. So good. That found my problem. My print has done what I wanted it to do, and it can go away. And now it is again saying no implicit conversion. We run to get rid of the print. Line 90, so that's a different one. All right, so delta F. All right, emo feature study, Chibra one to that. The printed, uh, yeah, the printed things look all right to me. No implicit conversion of symbol to integer. Oh, and it was fine with y. All right, so fy plus equals delta f y if delta f y. This is probably in a case where there. Huh, I don't think I modify x anywhere. So okay. This never happened on the previous line because delta f x was false, so it never even tried it. It does not like changing the features y. Find okay. So let's see what it found. Uh, I'll just print out this feature that it thinks it's found. There it is. Ah, hey, I'll bet I'm doing that select detect thing again, because this should not be returning a list. It should just be returning one of them. And that actually looks great for what it's returning. Like it found the eyebrow. I just returned it as a list. There we go. I don't need the print anymore, but it's finding the right thing. It's also not printing out, which is probably not, yeah, not returning a value. Because um, I mess with the features, but then I don't pass that in as the features for show face. So let's use the features that we allocated. And I don't think we need anything else. Nope, with the show face, that's all we need. Hey, and then suddenly it's got the two A's as surprised eyebrows. Great, I'm actually really liking how this is going. So if we can show an emotion, then one of the things I'd like to be able to do is to make little animations. Um, so this is great. This is great. I've got the start of code. Uh, really, I'm long due for setting this up. But I have something that works and that I like. And so, oh, it's already almost 25 minutes into this. All right, so this is what happens when you time box, and especially when you time box and talk through it, is you don't get through as much as you'd like. But I'm actually, I'm fairly happy with what I've got, uh, and it tells me a lot for the next time I try to do this same coding study. So that's all right. Like, this, this could be a lot worse. I'm enjoying this. Um, I want to do little animations. Let's do something pretty. I like things that are pretty. Uh, so. How about we do an emotion where it changes its mind about where it's surprised? Uh, and so I'll say, um, let's 
So what I'm doing is I'm uh, making an array containing a single symbol, in either normal or surprised. Multiply by three just makes it an array of three symbols. Uh, and then I add those three arrays together. So it's going to do normal for three frames, surprised for three frames, normal for three frames. And that gives me the beginning of an animation. Um, because I'm going to say emolist.each do uh, frame emotion because I'm going to do a limited number of frames. Uh, at the beginning of the frame, I'm going to say, oh man, there is a way to clear the screen by printing a control L character to it. Um, is there a fast way for me to make that work? In Emacs, it would be like a control V, control L. Um, so what I will do is I will very quickly, still on the clock, Google screen clear character code. Uh, well, I'm on the clock and this looks like it's going to be annoying. And I did something terrible. And I I briefly uh, brought up another window containing my email. Don't do that. It's too much of a temptation. I, but there, I did it. So you know, you can decide how much to uh, to, to care what I say. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear a screen, you know, in a fake way by printing out uh, twenty new lines because that'll totally clear a screen this size. Uh, and then I'm going to print out the face with the emotion for that frame. And then this should print nine frames. Uh, now, nine frames is really fast, which means I'm going to want, let's say, two tenths of a second. So these nine frames are going to take almost two seconds. Uh, and then we'll see how it looks. Undefined local method E. Study.rb line 86. What did I do wrong? Is can't find emotion e.inspect unless emo. I didn't call it e. I called it uh, e name, and I didn't change that. It didn't tell me because I hadn't given it a wrong motion. Ah, normal is not an emotion. And I thought, oh, well, hey, I'll go back and I'll add it. And that's fine, I can, but I never did. And then the features for this one will be no features at all. It'll go into the loop. Oh, hey, this is supposed to be a hash. Um, no features at all. And so it'll cheerfully do the loop, but the loop will do nothing. And so name normal then means no, exp no change in expression. Hey, I like that. Uh, and then if I want to see a little more animation, one thing I could do is to take this entire nine frames that I just did and eh, let's do it ten times in a row. Same kind of thing. I just take this element with nine or this array with nine symbols as elements, and I say, give me ten copies of that, like one array containing ten of them. Oh no, sorry, each one of those is an array, and so multiplying by Uh, what did I do wrong here? Normal times three plus surprised times three plus normal times three. And too clever by half, especially for this. All right. So there's all of that. Ah, uh, and I don't want the array of that. I want parens around that times ten. Hey. Parens instead of braces works, and you can see that he'll raise his eyebrows three times. And at that speed, it sort of looks like he's doing eyebrow exercises. Oh no, not three times. Sorry, ten times. I told you to do it ten times, so it's doing it ten times. Um, so that's sort of fun. That's sort of fun. Let's uh, let's change the delay to two. I like playing a little with this stuff as I do it. Because uh, if you can't have fun with it, I mean, what's the point of doing this kind of thing? Yeah, that's fun. All right, so I've got a little, uh, I've got a little face that raises and lowers its eyebrows. How am I doing on time? Oh, I got 29 minutes. I got plenty of time. Um, so once I've done that, what else might be fun? Well, 
Uh, I could make a multi-character mouth. Uh, nothing stops me from doing that. Um, some of the like width stuff on the mouth could be a little weird because if I make a wider mouth like that could be hard. But when I say it could be weird, uh, I haven't done any of the things that would make that hard. So let's go for it. You know, let's uh, let's see what we can do. Um, <clears throat> so if I want a multi-character feature to work, then I'll just make this line, the if delta f feature where we set that, I'll make that a little more interesting. Um, so I want it centered on the location, which means that the x where we start will be No, I'm doing this in the wrong place. You know what? I'll let the I'll let the mouth get wider and narrower just by modifying the expression, but then the hard part is putting the mouth in place. And so instead, we want if it's a multi-character facial feature, we want that multi-character feature to spread out. Uh, I don't know what I'll do with even width, but but I'll figure that out as I go. Um all right. I'm sure there's an easy way to get all of this working in some carefully thought out way. But that's not what I'm demonstrating today. I'm demonstrating how I do this just to, to play with it in a hurry and see how it feels. Because again, I'm taking this, you know, this features thing that I'm doing as ASCII art, and I'm trying to I'm trying to, to learn more about it. I'm trying to do some things and see how I think it works almost artistically, right? Like I play and I see how it works. I play and I see how it works. And the code is kind of uh, almost incidental to it. Um, I mean, I'm learning it. I'm learning the coding, but I'm learning coding in service to a different goal because that's basically the best way to learn coding is to have something else you want to do with it. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. So if the feature size is greater than one, and yeah, maybe this will maybe this will shake out to be great. Maybe this will turn out to be the only case. But but let's make it the multi-character case first. Um, then the start x is going to be the features x minus half the width, let's say, rounded down, because an odd width, yeah, rounded down, minus half the width. So the facial feature, f feature, is going to have a size in characters. I'm ignoring Unicode at the moment. We'll see what Unicode does. Actually, you know what? Let's see what Unicode does in IRB. Uh, So make sure, yeah, this, so this does the obvious thing with one byte per character ASCII characters. What does it do if I use a smiley emoji? Uh, I am Googling the smiley emoji. Uh, basically, so that I can stick it into quotes, because Ruby will just take it like that. There we go. Dot size is 1. Good. So it's not the size in bytes. It's the size in characters. And the emoji counts as one character. Perfect. That would actually do fun, fun things for the face. Like there's ASCII art gets way more fun if you can use emojis. Uh, great. But that means uh, minus half the size is perfect. Now this is going to be an integer. I divide by two. It's going to give me an integer divide and it'll just round down that way. So beautiful. Um, I'm not going to allow higher than one line features yet. Uh, and then for each character, and I believe each character is an accessor, See if this works. For the feature, for each character with index, then the grid at that feature y location and at 
the feature x location plus the index should equal that character. That's a little funny looking, and I'm sure it's extremely hard for you to read with the silly way that I'm uh, doing this with very large uh, font. But for the feature, each character with index, character, index, grid, at that location, x plus the index equals c. I'm not real convinced this is working yet, and that's OK. Uh, what I was doing, yeah, was setting that grid character. Let's see if this works. Let's start with something odd width, and we'll do something even width as well. I think the eyebrows can get even width. Let's do two underscores there for the eyebrows. And so those will, let's start with just those. Those will be the only thing that uses this. And it failed. Cool. Uh, and it's called each char, not each character. So that's fine. That may still work. That actually is working really well. Uh, beautiful, which suggests I could probably, yeah, I want fewer frames than that just for debugging. Um, <clears throat> I could probably uh, use it as the only code path there. Let's try it. Uh, boom, there. boom, boom, boom. Let's do it with the only code path, see if everything still looks good. Yeah, everything still looks great. Fabulous. Uh, and then let's do a multicolor, uh, multi-character mouth. Uh, I would love a multi-character mouth. Um, currently, I'm doing single quotes uh, for that. I don't remember how the backslash works inside single quotes when I'm trying to use it to escape itself. But let's do that. Let's make, a, let's make a slightly smiley mouth, and for now we'll make it the normal mouth. Oh, huh. Yeah, I don't think that's working right with odd length ones. Uh, I assume that has to be a size 3, but let's find out. Um, Yeah, it has to be size 3. And that divided by 2 is going to be 1, because it's, yeah, integer division rounds down. Great. OK, so so those things are fine. Uh, so something is not fine. All right, start x equals. Oh, well, I'm not doing it from the start x, so there's my first problem. Yeah, hey, there we go. Now we've got a now we got a better mouth. I don't actually like the two width eyebrows. I just did that to test. So let's make them three width. He can have big heavy eyebrows or she. It's not like this is it's not like this is actually distinguishing. So that's fun. Uh, that also means that in the surprised ones we can Play a little bit of a game here. I'm not sure how this will look, but I'm willing to find out. That's kind of fun. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's kind of fun. Um, <clears throat> cool. All right. Uh, and so let's see. I have like 20 more minutes, which means I could play a bit. Um, And the way I feel like I will choose to play, let's pull out the names of the emotions. Let's not call it all emotions. Let's call it emotion names. That's a clearer name for this variable. Uh, and then one thing we can do is make our little uh, our little fella have moods that, or again, our lady uh, have moods that go all over the map. Uh, we can just say 
emo list equals uh, for 20 frames uh, emotion names dot sample which will pull a single element out and so that should give us 20 different emotions from the list at random. Cool, we've only got two emotions, but that's awesome. That looks like it's doing the right thing. Um, there are fun things we could do with like how common a given emotion is in the sampling. There's a lot of things we could do, but for, for right now, what I think we'll do better is to add another emotion. Because we can now do multi-character things where things change in width. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, I copied that thinking I was going to do it, but maybe not. We could have a fun little squint where the eyes become like that, uh, except. I need to actually give the feature name when I do it. I think maybe the eyebrows will get small as well. Let's see how it looks. Because I want things to change width. That's what I'm playing with here. I want to see how that looks. So, uh, right now it's going to pull from any feature I name, which means, uh, let's do the comma afterwards because I want it. Uh, so let's see, let's see if you get some squinting. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And it does seem to work. Um, <clears throat> could we do angry like this? Because angry is one where the, you know, the eyebrows tilt up. Mm. Um, I think I can. I think I can make it work, though. I think I can make it work. I think that'll be fun. There are a few things that I want to do here. If the eyebrow starts high and goes low for one eyebrow, and it'll do the exact opposite for the other, and the eyes, I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm willing to find out, and the eyes get more kind of emphasized, of course that makes it look exactly like the nose, oh hey. Pretend I was doing this the right way. If I were going to keep this for longer, I might build a little thing into the code which would uh, detect something that was just a string and uh, do the right thing there. And the thing is that this code is only going to exist for another 15 or so minutes, and so I'm not going to do that. And so, temptation managed. I can do a little bit of manual work to avoid this extra feature that in the end serves no one. Um, and that's one of those things you learn from, uh, from doing coding studies, is to try and avoid little features like that. It's, uh, yeah, let's do a flat nose for angry just because. That doesn't look right. Oh, hey. Well, the first thing is that I didn't name the right eyebrow. It's just not modifying the other eyebrow at all. Um, and the angry doesn't look right with the smiley mouth either, which means... So drop the mouth, widen the mouth, I'm just going to drop it with underscores in this case. I could add a y plus 1 and, and drop the mouth, but I don't think I need to. Yeah, like that angry looks pretty angry. Let's see if we, uh, if we got one. Let me scroll back until we can get a nice angry here. There we go. Like that's a pretty good angry. 
I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I can drop his mouth anymore. Well, maybe, maybe. I think we can get him a little angrier. Yeah, hey, that's an angry mouth. That's an angry mouth. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, <clears throat> now, what this lacks that my original JavaScript version had was the ability to transition between emotions, uh, was the ability to kind of change from extremely high eyebrows for very surprised to a little bit surprised. And looking at this, I think I would need larger features. I think I would need to treat this more like a real graphics program where I had a little like block of characters for each feature. Uh, and I don't think there's any reasonable chance for me to do that in the next 12 and a half minutes. Um, although, I, you know, I could be done. That's, I, at some point, you know, you decide you're done and you don't, you certainly don't have to go all the way up to the, to, to the end. One of the things I may have discovered here is that ASCII graphics may be inherently limiting for this. Uh, and that wouldn't be the end of the world. The other thing I could do if I want a, transition from one to another is I could do a very angry and a slightly angry um, where one is a one is a variation on the other like this is this really looks very angry and it would be reasonable for me to call it that very angry uh, and then after I add a comma to it um, one thing I could do is to have a less angry that's just called angry um, and maybe the nose stays small but doesn't flatten. Uh, and maybe the mouth is just flat instead of instead of really hard down at the corners. Um, and maybe the eyebrows lower, but they don't do the full on. See if this looks less angry. Uh, and so how do I want to show this? Uh, let's just do... So right now we're doing, a, we're doing a full randomize everything, which is fine. Um, but instead... Let's do a progression from normal through angry to very angry. Yeah, because that very angry is extremely angry looking. <laughs> Maybe even too angry. That doesn't look real angry though. What can we do there? Like we dropped the eyebrows? Maybe we dropped the eyebrows but not uniformly. I feel like the slash in the eyebrow makes him look extremely angry. Um, figuring out how to do how to do you know sort of transitions in ASCII art would be fascinating. Um, but 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 let's not do it quite now. Uh, partly I feel like I'm coming to the end of this. I mean I think I may have given myself too much time uh, because I was worried. I, you know doing this for the first time as a recorded uh, coding study. I was worried that I would uh, that I would give myself too little time and you know get cut off when I'd done almost nothing. And and luckily I don't feel like that's happened. I feel like we're doing all right. Nonetheless, uh, let's do that same thing, but let's change the eyebrows on the angry guy. See how it looks. I like that. I think that's a better transition. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, because that's the really angry. And then that's a much better transition to the really angry. And his nose actually gets smaller, which weirdly works. Like, yeah, no, that works. That works. I like that. I might want to do, even for the very angry, a nose that stays a circle. Um, but you see what I'm doing here is fine-tuning. So I'm learning, but I'm learning little things. Yeah, I almost kind of like the flat line nose better. Like, it, it, it's... Oh, and dropped like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, and so, yeah, I've learned a few things here. Um, so there was a little bit of learning from the coding. Uh, I think you'll find that this kind of coding where you're just playing around with it will teach you more earlier in your career. Uh, and I'm 30 years in. 
I, I am learning things, but I'm learning things at a, at a slower clip as in terms of the, the sort of basic coding. A lot of what I'm learning is learning about the learning. A lot of what I'm learning is things like what I pointed out with, you know, not building in little features that are designed to save effort for something that has a, a very fixed term. Because it's so easy, it's so easy to spend all your time building effort-saving features um, that you don't actually build the thing you're working on. Uh, it's not that the little faces are important in their own right, though I like this and I may find a reason to develop it later. Um, it's not that the the business domain has to be all important business domain uh i mean it's, it's ascii faces right business domain um <clears throat> but it has to be a thing that drives you forward and you have to be able to tell if it's right or not and that's how i wind up fussing about these little details is i'm treating it like an important thing i'm doing the coding in service to it i'm doing i mean everything in service to it right um yeah so yeah, I, th I think I've learned the basic thing I'm going to learn here. I might do this study again, but I'm not going to learn a lot more in the next seven and a half minutes. Uh, and even if I hadn't been talking for the last few minutes, I wouldn't have learned a lot more in ten minutes. Uh, if I was going to do this again, I would select a different set of interesting things about this domain. Uh, so at the beginning, when I was talking about what I was doing here, I said that I was going to play with animation which I did. I was going to play with moving the facial features around, which I did. Um, I hadn't been sure if I was going to do wider facial features, but that turned out to be really useful. That turned out to work really well, so I did that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And so I think I've learned what I can from this combination of useful features, and so the next time I do it, uh, those of you who've followed me for a little bit, know that I'd say, throw the code away afterwards. This is not code that I'm going to pick up again and work from again, um, because I want to learn from building out on a new structure. Uh, in the short term, for things like this, that teaches you about different kinds of coding structure, you know, different, different ways you can structure little programs, and as you work longer and harder on larger programs, it teaches you what becomes architecture. First it teaches you small structure, then it teaches you larger structure. Um, I'm not learning a lot of architecture from this, but I'm also not suggesting that a task this simple done for one hour is going to turn you into an architect. Eventually you're going to have to do bigger stuff, but the way you get good enough to do bigger stuff is to become fast at small stuff. Um, you know, it's expertise. Expertise is learning the basics, getting good at the basics, doing it over and over until you're good, and then building on that. Um, Right. So yeah, I think this has been a this has been a, a nice solid little coding study. I think I've learned a little bit of interesting here, and I've uh, I've shown some of the things I'm trying to show. <clears throat> and so the next coding study, if I were going to to build this up into a larger structure, um, <clears throat> yeah, I would probably look for some kind of a display library that I could do easily. Uh, I might even do the next uh, the next thing in JavaScript or in something like Opal, which is a Ruby to JavaScript translator. Um, because this is such a fertile domain for a little graphical thing where you can draw just a few circles and squares and things like that. Um, I wouldn't want to go into something where the, the modeling, you know, where the features were, were more like 3D graphics modeled or something like that. Like that's, it's, it's too much. Uh, that, that would be a larger project than the code behind this. And so I'm not learning as much about the code if I do that. Um, great. Well, I feel like I've done all right by this. Uh, I am going to do a little pullout view of the code. Here we are. You'll notice a lot of its data, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's that's the setup that you're avoiding. The way you avoid complicated setup tools is to just have your data in the format you're going to use it. And there's nothing wrong with doing that in the Ruby uh, in the Ruby file. The features, the emotions, that's the data that it uses. And in fact, this is a very small program. Once you get past the data, uh, you can see in the little display thing over on the right that most of this program is essentially the great big JSON data structure. If I was going to write a real program from, uh, for this, I would probably put the features and the emotions into JSON data structures, which I hadn't thought about, but having done this little prototype has taught me that, oh, hey, that's, that's where a lot of this is. That is the format I would be communicating in. That's the interesting part. Okay, I guess that, that goes into a data file. That's fun. That's good to know. Um, yeah, and then a lot of the rest of it is essentially display code. 
a lot of what I'm doing here is sort of learning about the ASCII display and seeing how that works. Uh, and for things that feel a little like games, I think you're going to find that's that's repeatedly true. You learn about a lot about a specific domain because adapting general things into that specific domain is is hard. You know, it's it's an interesting thing. Great. Well, that is what I had to say today. Uh, looking back at the tools tasks and uh, the tools served me well here. Um, the task was what I was learning about. That was good, and for the purpose, I, I feel like I uh, I feel like I did a good job, both of learning a little bit and explaining a little bit. And so I feel like the tool task and purpose worked well. The time box was just slightly too long. If I did this repeatedly, I would want to cut it down to a shorter and shorter time box because that's part of where the interesting thing is is doing this quickly. Uh, so. An hour was slightly too too long. Uh, in some ways, that's great. If I do an hour and then 45 minutes and then 30 minutes, and I'm getting to the point where I can do something interesting in 30 minutes, like that's good. That makes me better and faster, uh, especially if I don't always succeed at getting something interesting done in 30 minutes. Yeah, so this has been a um, nice solid coding study, I think. I hope you all gained something from it like I did.